Okay. So to continue here. So yeah, I'm not sure how to map that up. Let's read it that way. That on the one hand, you could look at man as being one thing, i.e. soul, and the body is not part of him. On the one hand, you could look at him as two things, meaning he's comprised of, of two elements, which is also a big machleikis Aristotle and Plato. Aristotle says man is a rational animal. It means he's acknowledging both aspects of man. And, the Ram, and Plato says he focuses on the soul. Plato believes that the soul exists before man, before man, before the body is created. Aristotle says no. The soul is only a man, is only a, something about the body, or whatever. Maybe that's not the right way to say it, but and that has to do with the forms. We discussed this. Plato has this thing of the forms, and Aristotle doesn't. It's only in the in the in the in this world that there's anything. In the world, there's no other. Okay, so so the Ramam is saying they're both true from a certain in a certain way. And um, what I'm what I'm mapping onto that machlekes is that um, let's say well, if man is a is a, is a is a is an intellect, that's what he is. Then he doesn't have to train his body; he could just perfect his intellect. Body will follow. If man is a body, then he has to deal with the fact that he's a body by training it. So. You know. Now, how could they both be true, and, and which one is right empirically? Like, what, what exactly is that about? So that's what I want to solve for you. But also, the Rama Mechel Gimel Pekun Dalid. On the one hand, we could say that all you should think about is the intellect. On the other hand, uh, this is true also that this that the body is, is is there, part of this world. And going back to the same tension we're discussing here in the context of evil. On the one hand, he wants you to transcend being a body, but on the other hand, it's true that there's a body. Okay. So what we do have to we have to explain now is okay what does it mean that from one perspective one is right what does it mean they're both correct so I want to suggest the following and this takes us back to Bria Soilam Chelik Bey's Perik Choftes Ram says an extremely important um, um, sentence here this is in paragraph number thirty one and the way he expresses it is extremely important he says. Things have become clear. The position is now known. Anu maskimim in Maristo bechatsi midaitay. We agree with Aristotle halfway, and we believe that this reality is nitzchis utmidis in this teva that Hashem wanted and will never change, except for miraculously, even though Hashem could. However, it had a beginning when there was nothing existing besides for Hashem, and Hashem's wisdom decreed that it should come to reality, but that it should remain that way. So this is a halfway admission to Aristotle, because Aristotle is the third machleik is here between Aristotle and Plato. Aristotle says that the world always existed and always will exist. Plato says the world was born into being, more or less. The Ramana says we hold the world was born into being, but it will always exist. Okay. Now I want to tell you that the Machleikas between Aristotle and Plato follow the Machleikas about creation. Why? Because according to Aristotle, the world always exists in its current form. So he says, if you want to know what anything is, you have to look at it in its current form, because there's no other reality. But if you believe that the world is brought into existence, then you could start thinking about what are the principles uh, of, of the things that exist that preceded its existence. So that's a the idea of something, the fact that, say, Plato believes in forms, and Aristotle says, no, forms are only what's in reality, because Plato says that the world came from some, there's something that's other than the world, from which the world comes, I'm not getting into God over here, it's complicated, but even in terms of the world, the world's generation, you could, you could understand phases, you can understand there's a concept, and there's a thing being. And similarly, he thinks of man, even though man is a body, Plato says, yeah, he received the body. There's a, there's a genesis, there's a, there's a coming into being. And um, Aristotle says, what do you mean? Body is the only thing that there is. Well, why would you look at man and say he's turned into a body? What's the he that turned into a body? There always was man, there always will be man. Every man was born from male and female and ad, ad infinitum. So the Ramam who says that, that um, we accept Aristotle halfway, what he's saying is like this. The world was created from nothing. 
so therefore from that perspective from that perspective we can think about man as as following some ruts and some principle that says he should come into being and we could think about ourselves we could literally think about it's not just a matter of what the truth is if we think about ourselves as from the perspective of coming into being then we say ah you know what we're we god took soul and then he gave it a body and but maybe the body is secondary but it but we also cannot help but think about ourselves as eternal beings because we are eternal that's also true so whenever human being thinks about themselves they have they can they cannot fail but think about they're coming into being and their nature such as they are today if the rama would hold that the world will cease to exist in the future then we would always take the stance of everything is just exists a kasuf Hashem took a soul and gave it a body and the soul is going to go away from the body and that's the true man or something like that. No. The fact is that the nature of man as it is is set and as it is is as a body. So therefore man as a body is also a, a, un, an unavoidable way to think about ourselves. Now, going back to the contradictions, therefore, therefore, how do you train your character? The answer is you have to do both. Why? Because when you think about Chiddush and when you think about yourself as a as a mind then yes your body will follow your mind but sometimes you will inevitably think of yourself as a body because that's also true because the because the the the, the paradigm of cadmus also has a certain truth to it because after the world is brought into existence it is such in its nature forever so we cannot but help help but thinking about ourselves in both ways and they both have a basis in 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 reality okay so wait, let me let me finish this up. Okay, uh, I, want, I have a proof to this. My proof is like this. Take a look at Chelik Alf Perak Zion. The Ram over there is talking about the pasuk that says Adam Arishin when he was 130 years old. That's when he had a child who was Bedmusay Ketzalmoy. Bedmusay Ketzalmoy, and that's Chase. Um, now, Tzalem Alekim, Tzalem means what makes him what he is. Man is Tzalem Alekim. Man is divine because he has intellect. When Adam Rishon was 130, that's when he had a child who he was able to make, he was able to perfect his intellect. So only Shays, as the Ramam was, was Tzalem of Adam, because only Shays had a perfected intellect. The, the, that's what Chazal say when they, Adam Rishon for 130 years had Ruchim, it means people who were imperfected and those are shadim according to the Ramah. and the Ramah over there says in paragraph number four that any human who doesn't attain perfection in his intellect is not a human being is an animal he has the shape of a human being but he's at an animal his most dangerous animal because he can do great evils and he says he's not a human being but he's similar to a human being, okay? He's doyme to a human being, so they have a major problem. Why does the Pasuk say about Shays that when, Av, when Adam was 130, that's when he had a child who was bidmusai? Doyme is what you use for, doyme as Ram says in Chilagav Paragav means similar in a certain way. And this is the same word doyme he uses here in Chilagav, same Arabic word. Doyme means similar in a certain way. Someone who looks like a human, but is actually not a human, we say he's doyme to a human because he has the same shape. So why would the Pesach say about Shays that he was doyme to Adam? He wasn't doyme to Adam. He was identical with Adam's last But tell me why we say he's doyme. The answer is, the answer is that Adam was unique. Adam was unique because Adam wasn't created from Zerbedam. Ramam says in these Prokham Ra, a human being who's created from Zerv Adam can't live forever. Ah, but Adam Rishon wasn't created from Zerv Adam. Maybe he could live forever. Which, hey, yeah, talk a look of Horatius. Maybe Adam could live forever. Which, you have to think what that means in the Rambam, the Poil. But in the, in the Mashal, and in Yonenu, for our purposes, Shays is doymet to Adam. He's not Adam. Why? Why is he not Adam? Because the human being, the first human being, who actually came into existence from nothing, he is someone who, more than anyone else, holds of this paradigm of, of, of the Chiddush paradigm, which says, I am a soul, which was given a body. And the whole struggle of Adam 
Adam Arishan, with how, what do I do with the fact that I'm a body? There was something special about Adam Arishan that he had this struggle because everyone else, the fact that they're a body, is already built into the, to the nature of the world. Adam Arish, we could still think from the perspective of Kadmus because we're a continuation of Adam, but we're daima to Adam because he, of all people, was the human being who was most aware of the fact that he's Be'etzem, I, I was once a neshama. <laughs> and you know, you know, I was once a neshama. No one could say that besides, besides Adam Arishan, so to speak. Okay, obviously that's a martial because it's not a time thing. But conceptually, the idea, so this is my right, that the whole idea of how a human perceives himself depends on Chiddush. And therefore, the person who actually underwent Chiddush was the most, um, was the most cognizant of uh, what's called. Okay, of, of this kind of thing, of thinking being in a Shabbat. So now, so just to wrap it up, so we are a body, and therefore we care about uh, Ra. And as the Ramam ends in Chiddush Gimel Perek Dalid, we're supposed to see Chesed Mishpat Utztaka, which Batsa means we're supposed to try to right the evils in the world. Even though we learned, we discussed this last week, I think after Shir, we learned that Chiddush Gimel Perek everything is fine, so why should I care so much about anything? So the answer is true. From that perspective, you might not care about things. But there's also a perspective where the body does matter. And from that perspective, you're supposed to hate evil and supposed to eradicate it and, 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 and love Chesed Mishpat Utztaka, like he says in Chiddush Gimel Perek because ultimately there's an aspect of, of you which is a body as well okay one second i want to we'll go back to uh, back to shmuel's question and yeah i want to just wrap it up shmuel asked a question you went, mentioned the beginning of this year that the whole idea of seeing kita was way back in the beginning first year we said what does it mean that reality is good because when you're viewing reality you're making the decision already to be to participate in being by viewing we discussed that the Vayar Kim is very important. The Vayar Kim is what makes, what makes it tough is that you're viewing. So the question was, well, can't the person sometimes do something they doesn't believe in? That's a big machlaik is Plato and Aristotle. That's the same machlaik. Why? Because Plato says, no, you, you follow your mind. And Aristotle says, no, sometimes your body pulls you places that your mind won't go. And the Ramam agrees to that. And from that, that's called Dimyan. And from that perspective, you, tr- you truly don't see that the world is, is tough. You truly do have the problem of Ra because that part of you and that part that truth has to um has to face evil okay and and just to end with this point the dimian is actually not it's not commit like you said it's not committing to reality the dimian is actually doesn't really exist the dimian is not considered true the dimian is, is an experience of reality that's not considered being in touch with the truth but that's the nature of being the nature of being is that we're stuck in the chamer which is a chatzit between us and the truth and from that perspective, we have to explore that also. We have to figure out what that means too. And what that means is that there's Ra, inevitably, and we have a problem with that. And because we have a problem with that, we'd seek to um, implement Chesim Okay, you have a question? Uh, I guess two points. But first of all, this so the Chesim Mishpat Tzedaka is the post-creation, is Aristotle. Right. Is it, is it interesting that... Yeah, yeah, it's it's, it's, it's uh, the world in... Why? Why? Because it's like the world in the world in the world in the in the world in the world See, okay, so you're asking an interesting question. But Eilech Hafatzi means like this. The fact is, a very interesting fact, the fact is that we're going to carry on about how, how we, we want to transcend the Chaymer, but nonetheless, God made us this way. This Chelek Aleph Perek Beis, where the Rambam talks about the Chet Zedas, it's another place where the Rambam ends the Perek and says, ends up with this exclamation, Praise be Hashem who we can't fathom His wisdom. What that means is like this, that even the, the, the I said before, it's one of the major tensions in the Meir, because... The Rambam holds that our, our relationship with being material is supposed to be one where we don't embrace the fact that we're a body. But nonetheless, we recognize that Hashem wants us to be so. And that's the end of the Perek Beis, where he says, you know, it's almost like, I wish I could be, uh, just be a robot, an Emerson Sheikh or whatever, but it would, it, it seem, it, it's not something which I'm going to appreciate being a body, but praise to Hashem, whose who's wisdom so decreed. So that's Eil Chafatzti. So we have this kind, the, the tension is not just a tension that the Ramam holds happens to be an intellectual tension. The Ramam holds that the way to properly engage with the body is to recognize, is to experience this tension. Because if you say, look, Hashem wants to be a body, so let's just 
let's just get you know let's just um, dive right in and be bodily then you're uh, then you're likely to forget the truths so you're supposed to know these truths which according to the truths being a body is a, a negative and then you say but nonetheless i am a body it's like it's a good so you answer your question so that's the be'el chafatzi the mice of god created us this way it's not saying that god is a body it's saying god wants this he god clearly wants embodiment but he wants a kind of embodiment that people who are busy transcending embodiment are, are, are going to be um, managing, right? Who's the best managers for the world? Who's, who, are, who are the ones that could do the best for the world? The biggest tzaddikim that care, care less about, about the world, right? The biggest bali chesed are likely, on the long run, are the people that, that are, the, are most trying to transcend being a body. The person who's like, oh, he does chesed because he, because he himself is, is magushim, eventually he's going to do ra. That's the idea, that tension. What? Which one? The body? Body in this? No, no, but we end of the show right now. That you, we're judging reality, but maybe we don't approve of it. Right. Oh, that, yes. So that. What, what were you saying? So the Dimian, that's Dimian. Right. And that's not really. Um, <clears throat> that's what I was saying about that. That that doesn't. That's not a decision. That's not a decision to engage. Right. The whole problem. The whole catch twenty two or whatever. That or once you um, engage with it, you're already deciding that it's good. That doesn't apply to the dimin because the dimin happens by itself. Dimin is when is when you let the body be affected. Is when you uh, and then something happens to you. Last point you were saying. Sorry, no, 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 no. Last point you were saying. Um, I had a question, and I think I think you're answering, which, which is that there's two perspectives. There's my perspective of self, and then there's as I relate to the cloud and all of humanity in existence. And it seems that without me yourself, you're supposed to transcend. Mm-hmm. And Chesed Mishpat Tzadka, or the secondary perspective, really only applies as it pertains. To the fact that you know we exist as a, as a multi individual species in a multi individual reality, right? And you said it yourself, who, like who's this really for? It's for the tzaddikim who are supposed to be manic everybody else, right? Out them, they have to transcend. They have to become one thing, not a composite, but really only so that they can guide all of us composite. Yeah, okay, but but the thing is that they only care about other people. Um, in order to care about other people, you have to care about bodies. No, meaning again, because if you go, if you if you're such a philosopher, then you go back to Gimel Yud and you don't care about anything. Right, but again, you can't care about your own body. Your body can't. That's matter. attention. That's your attention. Body can't matter, right? It so can't matter, your but body only matters nonetheless, it's as, there. As it relates to other people, is what we're, is I what don't I know. I mean, yeah, yeah. Dalen, that could be. It's interesting. Is, is, is all agave, agave what you do for everybody else. Yes, it's very interesting. So it's like a God, God gave you a body so that you can care about other people. So basically. you can transcend it and care about other people. Yeah, it's interesting. It's very interesting. It's an interesting it's thought. Too, Why? Don't give anyone the body. Ela chafatzti. Ela chafatzti. No, ela chafatzti. God gave bodies. Right, exactly. It has to be good. That's, that's the game. That's his game. 